Today you're getting a walkthrough of the Pro Tools I.O. setup. Details on the I.O. setup, as well as just about everything else in Pro Tools, can be found in the Pro Tools reference guide inside the in-app help menu. The I.O. setup changed in Pro Tools versions 9, 10, and 11, and the release of Pro Tools 12 brought some serious power and flexibility to the I.O. setup. Listed here are just a few of the changes from unlimited buses, automatic output down mixing, a dedicated monitor path, just to name a few. The I.O. setup is found under the main menu heading Setup. Across the top, you'll see tabs for input, output, bus, insert, mic preamps, and hardware insert delay settings. Hint, you don't have to have a session open to access the I.O. setup. The input tab shows all the possible inputs available to your system, so you can name them, delete them, and create new paths. If your I.O. setup has inputs showing italicized names, these inputs were once available for the session, but not currently connected. In this instance, I'm using a Pro Tools Quartet by Apogee, which has four mic line and eight channels of ADAT format inputs. Along the top row, you've got columns for name, format, channel assignment, along with the name of the connected interface. In the bottom left, you'll see buttons for creating new input paths, new subpaths, deleting paths, and default, which creates all possible input paths, again, based on connected interfaces. At the bottom, you'll see a drop-down window selecting the default format of new inputs. The path order determines the order of channels in a new path, but will only be pertinent when your sessions become wider than stereo. The default format and path order is independently set up on input, output, and insert tabs in the I.O. setup. Above the name list is a button called Show Last Save Setup, which does exactly that. If this session was saved with a different interface and differently named inputs, this would show that save setup, if different from the current path shown. At the bottom of the I.O. window, you'll see three buttons, Export, Import, Restore from Session, and a checkbox to apply to all tabs. Export Settings always exports all the tabs. Simply, you're saving the complete current I.O. setup to the I.O. Setups folder. Import Settings allows you to import an I.O. Setup tab, either the current tab or all tabs, depending on the checkbox status, from existing saved I.O. Setups or directly from another Pro Tools session. Restore from Session allows you to restore the settings from the current session before any changes, basically a reverting to saved I.O. setup, with the option to apply the current tab or all tabs via the checkbox. If you haven't changed anything in the current tab, the option will be grayed out and unavailable. Hint, you can step between tabs using Command plus left and right arrow or Alt left and right arrow on Windows. This also works in other windows that have tabs like preferences or peripherals. The next tab displays output and the path management, format, and order functions the same as on the input tab. Notice the little speaker icon next to line one and two. That is the monitor path. This brings me to a big difference between the current IO setup and the IO setup in any previous version of Pro Tools. The IO setup works on two levels now, system and session. The IO setup map is saved with the session and the system. Pro Tools always maps the session monitor path, in other words, the mixer output, to the system monitor path, the system or interface output. If the session monitor path is wider than the system monitor path, say a 5.1 surround session to play out of a stereo system like the quartet, the I.O. setup engages automatic down mixing to the stereo monitor path. This allows for simple monitoring of 5171 or wider sessions on desktop or laptop systems, which may only be stereo or even just headphones. The down mixing performed is based on standard ITU equations. Okay, back to the output tab. In addition to the little speaker icon denoting the system monitor path, in the bottom right corner of the window, you'll see some path default assignment options. The default monitor path for any new tracks created is assigned here, including the option for none. The audition path is simple. Anything played from the clip list, import audio window, or workspace is played through the audition path, which can be assigned to any output in the system, including the main monitor path, which is kind of the normal setting. The output meter path is the path which is displayed in the output meter, which appears in the toolbar at the top of the edit window, and is also editable directly by right-clicking or control-click on the meter. The AFL-PFL assignment is an independently assignable path for AFL-PFL monitoring. This assignment can use any available outputs from mono to any possible surround width. It can also share the same path as the main output. The bus tab is the dance floor of the I.O. setup. Here's where all your routing does all its routing. 
Along the top row, you've got info on name, format channels, a mapping to output column, and a previous output mapping display. The displays are self-explanatory, and mapping to output is exactly that. To easily see all the buses that may be mapped to an output, clicking the mapping to output heading sorts them accordingly, alternating descending or ascending order. Like the input and output tabs, you'll see buttons for creating new paths, new subpaths, deleting paths, and default, which creates either one, all possible output paths based on connected interfaces, two, 12 stereo internal buses with 24 mono subpaths, or three, both, depending on the status of the little drop-down button to the right of the default key. There are two drop-down buttons on the right. Output meter path is the same setting as the output tab, and default output bus sets the output bus assignment to any new tracks created in a session. The next tab is inserts. This is for hardware inserts, and the insert points shown are the available outputs on your connected interfaces. The next tab is preamps. If you have an Avid Pre or a Pre-Protocol compliant set of mic pre's connected, this displays the mapping of the pre's outputs to any of the connected inputs. The final tab is hardware insert delay settings, allowing you to manually adjust the delay times for any outboard gear inserts that need to be delay compensated on its return to the Pro Tools mixer. Note. If an input, output, or bus is actually assigned in the Pro Tools mixer, the name will be displayed in bold, so it's very easy to see which buses, inputs, or outputs are being used in the mixer or in the session. Deleting paths will bring up a warning dialog box if you have selected for destruction a path that is currently in use. Unused paths will just delete without any warning. Be sure to see all the videos on the Pro Tools I.O. setup, including the detailed descriptions of each tab.